Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the IG Petrochemicals Limited Q1 FI24 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectation of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pramod Bhandari, CFO from IG Petrochemicals Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody is doing well. On this call, we are joined by SG, our Investor Relation Advisor. I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through our financial results and investor presentation, which were which was actually uploaded on the Stock Exchange on our company website. We will provide you a brief summary of recent industry changes, how IGPL is progressing, and post that we can go through the operational financial highlights. So, in terms of the industry, as you know that the, for last quarter, there was a demand pressure has been a taking a point for the last quarter, which has cycled the growth momentum of many chemical manufacturers as end user industry. Industries are holding back their buying to certain extent, slow down, uh, slow demand recovery in China, and prolonged restocking continue across the globe. And the prices of all key chemicals, including the specialty chemicals, are under pressure. Amid excess supply, I would like to highlight that the demand and prices of thalic anhydride were less affected as compared to the other specialty and the commodity chemicals. Thalic anhydride industry is primarily served by very few manufacturers in the global market, and demand was marginally affected. Being the largest manufacturer in India and the second largest producer in the world, we wanted to highlight that the thalic anhydride industry is an exclusion essential chemical which is consumed by a wide spectrum of industry, where the demand is either stable or strong. Demand for thalic and iodide has been formed from paints, plasticizers, UPR. Over the last few years, we have witnessed a good demand from end users like CPC, pigments, specialty chemical, agrochemicals. However, over the last few quarters, we have witnessed low volume pickup from these industries. Despite overcast conditions, our company has delivered a steady performance for the quarter gone by. I just wanted to give you a glimpse of the performance. The IGPL is the largest producer of thalic in India. We manufacture roughly 2,22,000 metric ton per annum. We have four key products in our product portfolio, which is thalic and We also produce the malic and dryad, benzoic acid, and the DP, which has been started around one and a half year ago. We have all our manufacturing facilities, 13 facilities at Taloja in Maharashtra. The plant is managed by a highly skilled workforce, adhered to all the requirement protocols to meet high quality standards. Coming to our operating performance, we have registered a quarterly revenue of 63 crore, or profitability stand at 36 crore. We have continued to maintain the business momentum despite uncertain external events and volatile pricing. On year on year basis, our performance was depleted due to the three primary reasons. The first reason is the overall volume. For the last quarter, compared to the corresponding previous quarter, was dropped by 10% due to the slowdown in some of the specialty chemical and pigment segment. The second reason was the men, because as you are aware, that generally the men prices are 20 to 30% higher than the thalic prices. However, for the last quarter, it was 20% to 25% lower. That has actually impacted the profitability. And third, overall, the, the margin was between the 100 to 150 level compared to to average 200 for the last three to four years. We have seen some spread revision in the last week, which we have seen some improvement at the end of uh, July or starting from August. Price seems to be stabilized now and now recovering. For Q1 FI24, the total revenue stand at 563 crore. The non thalic Product revenue contributed to around 44 crore. Export contributed nearly 10% of the business. EBITDA stand at 67 crore, which is 11.8%, uh, which is very similar to the last quarter. Profit after tax is 36 crore. The profit margin at 6.4 crore.
As you are aware that the company has planned expansion of the Thalic facility of 53,000, our existing location, Saloja. The downfield expansion is estimated to cost around 350 crore and expected to complete by March 24. Post PF5, our total capacity of Thalic will be 2,75,000 tons, which will add incremental revenue of around 500 crore. We wanted to expand our downstream derivatives and plan to expand our footprint in Indian export markets, which will improve our overall operating leverage and boost our profitability. This expansion aims to diversify and increase the revenue pie of downstream products and other derivatives. As on date, the company has a very strong balance sheet with best-in-class working capital days, which is around 10 to 20 days. Post-expansion, we are expecting a healthy cash flow in the business, which will further strengthen our company's position in the market. We believe that we have laid a strong foundation for future by focusing on long-term growth. Overall, the demand for few quarters may look slightly sluggish, but the company foundation is strong enough to weather any volatility. With our additional capacity, we will be well-positioned to capitalize on the multiple prospects like growing domestic demand, import substitution. We will continue to add new product to our product basket, which will further add or help us to reach out to the new clients and new industry. With this, I would like to conclude the presentation and open the floor for question and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take the first question from the line of Nirav Jimavia from Envil Research. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, so, so first question is on uh, the capacity utilization, what we have achieved in uh, 1Q of FI24. So if you can uh, let us know what was the capacity utilization, because you mentioned that we sold some 10% lesser volumes on a Q on Q basis. So uh, if you can uh, share the capacity utilization for us. So the last quarter there was capacity utilization of around 90 to 91%, which is standard. Of course, there was a shutdown for six days, unplanned shutdown, uh, which was recovered uh, in a period of five to six days. The capacity utilization extended remained 90 to 91%. Having said that, because of the sluggish demand, in spite of order, there was a lower offtake because of that the inventory has gone up and we are able to sell around 45 to 46,000 tons. Okay. So uh, when we started the Q2, uh, where you also mentioned that now we have seen some improvement in the spreads. So do we or were we carrying some uh, inventories or high cost inventories of the last quarter or let's say the low cost inventory of the last quarter because at the fag end of the quarter the prices have fallen and now they are recovering so yeah so basically the prices have fallen that's why the customer first so there was a problem in the downstream industry in some of the segment and second when the prices uh, were falling then this is, customer decided to restock and wait and watch now prices are stabilized and again started recovering. So we are seeing the good demand in the market. And the inventory, whatever we have at the start, at the end of this quarter, most 50% of that is already been sold in the market in the current quarter. Correct. And sir, if you can share which of the user industries uh, we are seeing in terms of this improvement which has happened, because you mentioned that CPC and some of the other user industries were facing some sort of problem. So... For which of the pockets you are seeing where we've been able to liquidate our inventories and seen this uh, higher utilization? We have seen the good demand in paint segments uh, and the plasticizer. Paint and plasticizer are actually doing well. Of course, the pigment was actually impacted for, from the last quarter. We have seen slightly uptick, but it is not up to mark to, to get up to, you can say, 100% utilization. And there was a slower demand because all other downstream petrochemicals, or specialty chemicals, that prices have gone down. So overall right. demand in that segment has impacted because of China started restocking their inventory across all the chemical segment. So that has impacted the overall pricing as well as the margin for the downstream industry. 
correct so sir let's say when the pigments was doing well uh, one year before uh, out of our total volumes what was the contribution of pigments then and now around, because around i mean the contribution almost in the same which is 8 to 10% because uh, some of the quantity which we were selling it to the plasticizer now we have allocated to the paints especially the chemical and pigments it is in terms of the quantum it is hardly one or Two percent different, but we were expecting five to ten percent growth. That has not happened. Correct. But once pigment starts picking up, coupled with the growth in your paints, uh, then probably we will see those volume catch up also happening from the pigment side. Volume catch up will happen from pigment side, and then volume catch up will also happen in the specialty chemical segment, which actually has been sluggish in last quarter. Correct. So, is it possible to share, uh, let's say? segment wise uh, so i will not be able to give you full segment wise but generally paint and plasticizer include around 30 to 35% the pigment uh, upr pvc is around 10 to 15% balance is other chemicals got it got it so that other chemicals which forms majority part of our volumes which is close to 50% could see an improvement which could support our volume i think actually the other chemical is 25% which include the specialty chemical agrochemical and upr and other segments got it uh, so second question is on uh, the conversion cost because when we break down your conversion cost last year we were at around 250 crores uh, fixed plus variable and if we then break it down between the variable and the fixed cost based on the details given in the annual report Uh, it's like 100 crores of variable cost and 150 crores of fixed cost so just so, wanted to understand i will give you in the dollar term uh, the okay. total cost was around 158 dollar per ton okay 73 was the conversion cost and balance was around 80 80 dollar per ton so 73 and 85 is the break up of conversion cost 73 is the conversion cost And 85 is the other cost. So total cost is 158 dollars. It includes all fixed expenditure, variable expenditure, interest, and all type of things which is debited in the P&L in annual reports. Got it, sir. So just want to understand from here. Let's say when we will commission this 53,000 tons of plant, uh, it's at the same location. So probably our fixed cost won't go up in tandem with. Uh, Yes. Uh, so uh, typically today, today, today the conversion cost is seventy-three dollars, seventy to seventy-three dollar, and the fixed cost, which include all other cost, is around eighty to eighty-five dollar. So that cost will go down because there will be addition of around twenty percent of capacity. So that Correct. cost should ideally be around seventy dollars, seventy to seventy-five dollar. So twelve dollars savings could come on the incremental volumes which we will sell in the market. Correct. So overall, you can say from one fifty-eight, our cost should be around one fifty to one fifty-one total cost, including Got conversion, fixed, and variable. Yeah. You got it, sir. Thank you so much. I'll join back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchdown telephone. We take the next question from the line of Aditya Ketan from Smith Institutional. Please go ahead, sir. So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, okay. Sir, first question is in your opening remarks. Uh, you had mentioned that pan prices, uh, pan demand was less affected as compared to other commodity chemicals. Is there any data point which you can quantify with this? Because sir, so, the prices of pan so, have declined by twenty twenty five percent on quarter on so, quarter basis. So demand of pan almost remains same in domestic market. There was uh, there were import of around thirty to thirty one thousand ton. and balance is sold by the other players in domestic market so overall demand if you see in terms of the pan it has not been impacted in domestic market of course china is able to sell the product at a cheaper okay. cost uh, because across the board they were destocking and then they are selling all the chemicals at marginal cost or slightly better than marginal cost that has impacted the prices across the board now i think that destocking is over we have seen stabilization of pan. Is an actually improvement of week, but sir, anyway, China was not a dominant player in pan business. I think I, South Korea was a dominant. I, player. 
I understand, but the last quarter, the highest import is happening from China and Taiwan. South Korea was number fourth, negligible. Okay, because earlier, sir, what I believe, like, uh, so, so South Korea used to import around, uh, of the total imports of India, around 55 to 60 percent was from South Korea. Now you're saying, sir, this figure has changed to how much? Uh, now, the South Korea is selling three to 4,000 tons, hardly, because one of the plant in South Korea has, has uh, discontinued or stopped the operation. And balance, they are selling it. I think the first is China, and generally this is the period April, May, June when China generally do the restocking of all their chemicals. So not only for thalic, across the board they sell the chemicals that has actually reduced the the prices as well as margin for most of the specialty chemical and chemical companies. Now that restocking is over, we have seen the improvement in the prices across all the chemicals. Okay. And sir, the decline in pan prices, like what we had witnessed over quarter on quarter basis, that was quite steep. So what makes you comfortable? Like, so now the prices have corrected and they have started to move up. But so considering the demand has gone down to around 1992, today when we are talking it is 100 to 102. Okay. And similarly, sir, how would be the trend of orth orthoxylene prices? Ortho is remaining the same between 85 to 90. 85 to 90, okay. Okay. And sir, any idea like, so uh, I think, uh, so July month also, the spread actually have contracted, like when we look on month on month basis. So, so July is a difficult month. July is a difficult month because of the two reasons. One is the prices and second, the when you are producing and you are holding the inventory and suddenly prices have gone up, the customer rather than buying, they come into the wait and watch, watch mode. Now, since prices started increasing, you see the demand because the, all the guys who are, were able to do the restocking of their stocks, now they wanted to fill their stocks and wanted to do the, the consume the thalic which is required for their operation. So whatever is the deficit generally you have in the month of July, we have seen the improvement in August and we believe that August, September will be the improvement over the July. Okay, so there is a chance like on quarter on quarter basis spreads can move up. Like considering August and September. July was not, but let's hope September, October will be bad. Uh, sorry, uh, August, September will be improvement from July. Okay. And sir, uh, I, I believe, sir, for FI24, we are, uh, so we would not be sitting on volume growth and considering if spreads also like they are in a concern. So how do you think in, in FI24, any guidance on top line or EBITDA or we would I be... Think as a company, we don't want to give any guidance in terms of the profitability because it's a purely market determined. The profits, if you ask me, is not that much impacted from thalic, because, but because of the malic, because typically we assume 120 to 130 crore of the revenue from malic, which directly is translated to EBITDA, which has reduced to now 60 crore per annum because the prices of the uh, malic android has gone below uh, 80 rupees per kg, which was... Generally, the thalic is 100 and malic is 120. So now it is below 80. You can understand that. So that has also impacted the profitability overall. Okay. And so these volumes of 45 to 46,000 tons, this will rebound next quarter to the uh, so to the normalized range of 50. It, it, it is expected, yeah. Around uh, 50, uh, 49, 50, 51, this is the range. So I will not say 70. This is generally it is 16,000 to 17,000 per month is the range. Got it, got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. We take the next question from the line of Madhur Rati from Counter Cyclical Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for that. Good afternoon. Sir, last uh, quarter you are... Can you be... Uh, I'm yeah. getting a voice. Yeah, am I am I clear right now, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Sir, last quarter you are um, guided like uh, our margins in steady shape would be around 150 to $200 per ton. So what kind of timeline do you see uh, based on the experience and in the market situation right now that uh, when can we achieve this uh, on our books? Quarter, last quarter margin... 
uh, were actually 150 to 200. Right now, it was moving around 100 to 150. We have seen some improvement. But apart from the thalic mining, it's the malic prices which need to improve because the, the guys who are making the external malic, they are making cash losses. So for us, the only privilege is that whatever we are producing, we are selling is translated to EBITDA because hardly any cost for the malic. The overall profitability will improve when you see the improvement in the malic prices because that account going to be account for around 120 to 130 crore per year. That will be the big proportion. And second, we Second is the overall improvement in the thalic prices. And third, we have achieved the around optimum capacity, or you can say around 650 to 700 per month, or around 8,500 8, to 8,000 tons in the DP. That is priced uh, better than uh, the, the thalic and dry drug. So that is also adding to our margin overall. Uh, okay, Anjar, uh, could you give me some kind of timeline on when we can uh, see margin going to steady state again? So there is no timeline which I can give because it's all demand supply in the overall market. But since I am seeing that demand continue to remain robust in domestic market, so overall the global market also demand is recovering. So I believe probably in next one or two quarters there will be end and there will be stabilization in the pricing and the margin for all the chemicals including thalic. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, sir, the quality control effect that the government had initiated. Back. So, uh, are you seeing uh, some kind of positive impact from that? And could you just explain how, like, is China, like, we know that China is cost competitive, so can you just highlight uh, on the China issue a bit more? So, China was the, the biggest seller to domestic market for the last quarter. Government has introduced the quality standard to check that uh, all the thalic which is being imported into India is complying with the norms set up by the government. So there are some places where they are producing the thalic from Nampal and other places where the quality is not up to standard. So that will not be able to come to India now. So that is one. Now all the thalic which is imported in India will be up to the quality standard set up by the government. Okay. So, so will this help the domestic industry and uh, are you seeing some kind of positive impacts from this uh, policy by the government? There will be certainly positive impact, but it, it's too early to judge that because it, they have just implemented in June, and we are just talking about the June quarter. You need to wait for one or two quarters to see the real impact. Okay, sir, that would work. And, sir, my next question is, uh, we are uh, moving into biogas and ethanol production, which is a even more commoditized product. And uh, so what kind of IRR are you, are you expecting from the same? So right and now, we are evaluating the project. So this is not correct for me to discuss about the commercial part. Once it's a complete evaluate in the project, once we finalize the project and planning to implement, then it will be right time to discuss about it. Okay, thank you, sir. And my final question would be: uh, We are forward. Uh, we, we highlighted on forward integration into some of the chemical uh, derivatives, specialty derivatives. So could you just highlight on that and what kind of? So that is under process. I think that is under process. And very soon we will hear the good news because we are waiting the approval from the government, environmental approval. Once the approval is received, then we will be able to disclose in the public domain. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Yogesh Bhatia from Sequin Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, <coughs> uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Sir. I'm slightly <coughs> new to this company, so I wanted to understand that thalic and malic anhydride, these chemicals, uh, uh, what makes you, uh, what are the few factors that you think are probably the reason that the uh, realizations have probably, you know, bottomed out for us, or is that not the case? The reason is very simple, because the thalic is very generalized essential commodity. If you look at all chemical companies in India, which is around 170, 180, around 120 to 140 companies use this. So this is required in all chemicals, be it paint, plasticizer, pigment, PVC, agrochemical, specialty chemical, UPI. You name the chemistry, you name the company. I think most of the companies in chemical industries are our customers. So a chemical which is widely used across all spectrum of chemistry, mm. and India is being seen 
as a next growth engine for the specialty and downstream chemical. So there is no reason that the growth will not happen. Okay. All no. chemical companies in India are growing in the downstream, in the specialty chemical, agrochemical, and all sides. And they all need, because this is basically a raw material intermediary for most of the chemistry. No, I understand that the volume of take is there, which is yeah. also visible in this quarter also. But uh, yeah. the, and your costs are fixed, right? So I want to yeah. know, the uh, profitability can only increase if realizations go up. So is there a logic that China destocking is towards the fag end or uh, things like that? They, are, they generally do in April, May, June. That is their general phenomena happening in last 10 years. Every time there will be destocking in April, May, June. The margin is the interest. So okay. now we have seen the uptick in the margin for the phallic and dryad. For the melic, it is yet to be improved. Believe okay. me, the, the profitability will be, be could have been more than 12 crore higher in the last quarter if the melic prices were historically at the same level, which is 20% above the thalic prices. But right now, they are 25% below the thalic prices. Okay. Our profitability would have been 50 crore plus for the quarter, last quarter. But the melic price, which ideally has to be 120 to 130 rupees, if thalic is 100, it is right now at 78. Okay, so that has impacted the overall profitability. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. That should be all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Nirav Jimovia from Envil Research. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, so thanks for the follow up. So sir, when we say that we incur uh, catalyst cost on uh, uh, for one of the catalysts generally we take a shutdown in a year and we incur those expenses, where does it actually fit into? So does it form a part of our repairs and expenditure or are they clubbed no. under any other help? They club as a part of the other expenditure and when you incur a expenditure for the catalyst, since the catalyst is used for the three years to three and a half years, it is spread it over the period of three years. Okay, okay. So let's say if the cost is 30 crores, 10 years get 10 crores gets debited in the PNL for the next three years. Precisely. Correct. Correct. Got it. And so second question is, uh, you mentioned that like last quarter, the gross margins were in the range of 150 to 200 dollars, which in Q1 had fallen between 100 to 150 dollars, and there were some lesser volumes also being sold in uh, Q1. Despite Correct. of that, our profitability has been resilient. So. Like, they have not fallen dramatically in between the quarters. So, if you can just explain that and uh, out of the, that, for, yeah, yeah. The, the reason is for the first two months, April and May were good for the for the thalic as well as malic. In June, we have seen the downfall of thalic malic margin. That is number one. And number second, so that's why the if the June would have been same, the profitability would have been more than 50 crore. June was really, really very harsh in terms of the overall decline in prices. Number second, the malic prices has gone down drastically. Like I mentioned, typically when thalic is 100, the malic is 120 to 125. Right now it is 75. So right. it's the other way around. That has impacted the profitability of gross margin by at least, uh, say, 10 to 15 crore. And third is some contribution has come from the DEP. We are now able to achieve around 650 to 700 ton per month of the DP, which we are selling around 10 to 20 percent, 20 percent higher than the thalic prices. So that has also given flip to the overall profitability. So that's why, in, in spite of the lower margin, you see the last quarter and this quarter profitability remains same, in spite of lower sales. Got it. So let's say, sir, when we were in the month of June, let's say considering our monthly production in the range of 14 to 15 thousand tons. Uh, what was the closing inventory of the lower prices which we were carrying, which we liquidated probably in Q2? That's number one. And uh, uh, second uh, question to this is, out of, let's say, 42 crores of uh, uh, non thalic revenue which we uh, done in Q1 of FI24, what was the breakup between malic, benzoic acid, as well as your uh, uh, DP? So let me answer your first question first. Second question first. The malic was 15 crore, and then balance uh, 20 crore was the DP and the benzoic acids. Okay. And when you are talking about inventory, generally we don't carry much inventory because whatever is the process and we have advance order, we are able to sell it out. 
This time it happened when the order was booked, price was sealed, but okay. customer was not ready to uptake. So okay. that has created the slightly higher inventory. Typically we maintained three to four thousand, and this quarter it was seven, eight to nine thousand. But okay. now it will go down again because there is a good demand surge in the month of August, July and August. So okay. inventory was just higher by two to three thousand ton. Okay. And now it is being uh, recaptured, and then sales is going as usual. Well. Got it. So that would give us some extra margins probably in Q2 plus the utilization levels also improving. Utilization, I think, it will remain same, 90 to 95 percent, 90 to 91 percent, which is 16,000 to 16,500 is the average we are producing every month. Got it, sir. Got it. Thank you so much, sir, and thank, thank you very best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. We take the next question from the line of Aditya Khetan from Smith Institutional. Please go ahead, sir. Sir, thank you for the follow-up. Uh, sir, to the earlier participant, you mentioned that 10 to 15 crore impact on gross profit was because of the malic anhydride price decline. Hello? Sir, am I audible? Hello? Hello? Uh, cycle and if you have seen how long you know this cycle has lasted if ever you know historically you have seen such phenomena historically if you look at last 10 years or 20 years probably one or two time in last 20 years it has seen that the manic prices have gone down below thalic it is rarely happened in last 20 years probably this time and i remember somewhere in in 2001 2 or say 97 98 it happened so basically the thalic prices Malik prices are always higher than thalic because it costs more to produce this. But this time it is not only the malic prices below, but they are below by 20 to 25 percent with a huge gap. So that is going to impact all the malic producers because right now anybody who is using the beauty and root of producing the malic, they will be making the operating loss. Right. So, so typically, this would be this would be a monthly kind of a thing, right? It it should last for some months, and again the prices Probably should rebound. One or one or two quarter, it has to, because all the downstream product, which is produced from Malik, which is like BDO, PBAT, THF, all other products, they all are impacted. So ultimately, the prices has to go up. There is no no second thought on that. But if question is when, probably one or two quarters more to go. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Keshav Gar from Counter Silicilic PMS. Please go ahead, sir. Sir, I'm trying to understand that in your investor presentation, one IG biofuel uh, you have mentioned, where, sir, so is this our CSR division or uh, what kind of no. ISR we are expecting from so, compressed so, biofuel? So right now, this is the company, it's not CSR division, this is the new company floating or acquired by IGPL, which is 100% subsidiary of IGPL. We are planning to evaluate various green chemicals under this, which include ethanol, its derivatives, CBG. And once we finalize our plan, we will come back to you, post our board approval, and then discuss about the what 
product or plant we are going to implement under that company. But essentially, that company is for all green chemistry. Sir, so the basic thing is only yesterday in newspaper it had come that parliamentary panel had pulled up oil ministry that PA, oil marketing PSUs are not interested in uh, investing in uh, compressed biogas because it is unviable. So, so government companies are uh, wary of getting into this, but somehow we have floated one company, acquired one company, but still plans are not finalized, but company no. has been floated. No, so so company, company has been floated not for CBG only. That's why I'm saying it is the green chemistry. We are working on three areas simultaneously on green chemistry. And we wanted a separate company for green chemistry, which is different from IG, which is working on of getting into the chemistry of fossil fuel base. The green chemistry will be not based on the fossil fuel, number one. Number two, the... The article which you have read is talking about the CBG, which is converted from the rice straw and uh, one more product. There are six or five methods to, con to manufacture the CBG. So I'm not commenting right now which method we are looking at. There are multiple ways to do it to CBG. The newspaper article was referring to a particular way which is not viable, which is true. But there are other ways which is the Napier grass, you can go to CBG, which is in Thailand. There are other ways, rice straw, you can go to CBG. And then there is a uh, bio waste of cows, you can go to CBG. So we are right now evaluating various ways how you can get into CBG. Why CBG? Because we believe that it is a future. In terms of the CBG will be finally uh, blended with the CNG. 20% government will may come out with the, the policy. Like ethanol, it will be. So right now, we are evaluating. We have not finalized any plan. We are evaluating once we finalize any plan. I think that will be the right time to discuss about that. Sir, and as far as ethanol is concerned, sir, sugar companies getting into ethanol is uh, makes sense. But for uh, our company, and sir, every Tom, Dick and Harry is getting into ethanol, they will soon be over capacity, whereas CNG penetration is increasing, EV penetration is increasing. After 10 years, there will be no takers for this. So please, so let me, for le 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 let me clarify, let me clarify you. We are evaluating not only for the purpose of ethanol, we are looking at the downstream chemistry of ethanol. Right now, all the players are either the politicians or the farmer. They are into that business. We are a chemical company. We are always looking at the chemistry side of the product. So we are getting, if at all we are getting into ethanol, we are not getting into for the purpose of ethanol. Ethanol is just a start point. We will be looking at the downstream chemistry of ethanol. Sure. Sir, I'm just trying to understand one thing. Before embarking on any capex, what is the IRR that you, what is the minimum 15%? If any project has less than 15% IRR, it's a straight no from the board. Okay, so that is very reassuring. That is, it's 100%. By the way, we have rejected two proposals, including a JV, uh, in last six months, because the IRR was less than 15%. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, that is good to know. And, uh, sir, just one last thing. Sir, uh, are we seeing any improvement in the PA uh, prices and what is the outlook going forward? Do you think that our performance has bottomed out or is the trend continuing? I think we have seen improvement in the PA prices because when the prices stabilized, OX prices is going up. We have seen the PA prices touching to around 94, 95 in the month of July. Now it is hovering around 100 to 102. We have seen whenever there is a decline, I'm just talking about the last 20 years, whenever there is a decline in the prices of the, the OX, everybody in the end consumer industry getting into wait and watch mode because they wanted this to stabilize. So they started doing the destocking of their inventory. Once the price is stabilized and slightly going up, you will see the sudden surge in the demand of all the downstream industry. So that is what we are witnessing today. So July was the one when we have seen the, the bottoming out. Now we have seen 8 to 10% improvement in last 10 days. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, so thank you very much. and best Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. 
We take the next question from the line of Mr. Aditya Ketan from Smith. Please go ahead, sir. Sir, thank you for the follow-up. Sir, I, I had a question on to the DEP side. Uh, sir, you stated that we are running at seven, 700 tons per month. So that seems we are operating at full utilization levels for DEP. Sir, so, we have uh, in we the also month. had a plan to expand this capacity from 8,400 to around 14,000, 15,000 tons, that too with minimal capex. So that is on the that, pipeline right now? That, that we will look at post-commissioning of PFIR. But sir, this too you can do at uh, at very minimal capex. I believe you had also mentioned in your plans that it's also at two to two and a half crore. I I understand that the question is not of capex. Right now, the mm -hmm. entire concentration is to operationalize the PFI, which is fifty three thousand ton. Then all the equipment of the PFI, which is lying at the site, will be segregated and built up in PFI. Then we will look at this for the reporting. Okay, and so this PFI which we are building, so generally what we know that the uh, IG has some seven, seven to eight percent additional yield from make from uh, for making pan from orthoxylene. So this new PFI does it comes with so with better yields or with lower cost? No, Is there uh, anything new or, okay. or, or it would be it's, it's not IG. Everybody who's buying the similar equipment, similar technology, everybody have same type of yield. It will not improve. Yeah, it will remain same. It will remain same. Okay. Yeah. Mr. On to the technological tie-up, so we had it from Germany. I think our competitors are not having that. So does not. So that does not give you so much. I will not like to comment what they have because I have no idea about that. But if you are buying a particular technology, because we are using the technology for last three to four decades, and we have that experience of operating the similar equipment. So we are sure that we will be able to get similar type of yield on our products. Okay. Sir, so just a last question, sir, on to the capacity addition. So any idea like how much our competitor in India and globally they are adding capacity? So I think apart from India, hardly any capacity is coming up except one or two plants may come up in China because they are looking at uh, integration of thylic, malic, and other things. But in Europe and America, I don't find any even news also to set up any plant. While the demand of thylic is growing continuously. So what be the quantum of this China? Like any capacity figure, if you can say? I I am not sure about, but I think between 50 to 1 lakh ton. 50 to 1 lakh. And sir, in, in India, so Thirumalai, any idea like how much uh, they are looking to add for the next two years? I think you need to ask them. They don't share the information with us. <laughs> okay, no worries, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Pramod Pandari for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us today on the earning call. The only comment I need to make is when we are in a... Uh, chemical or especially chemical, commodity chemical company. Patience is the key. India is a great growth story. There is a good consumption of all type of chemicals and the chemistry is happening in India. Today, India is around 3 to 4 percent of overall chemical consumption in the world, uh, which is growing very well. Compared to China, 2008 China was similar, but China today comprises around 37 to 38 percent of the global chemical manufacturing. So Indian story for the chemical is just started. It's a long way to go. Thank you very much. If you have any query, please contact our investigation advisor SGA or directly send a mail to me. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. On behalf of IG Petrochemicals Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.